We have now come to the finale of our Chapter 5 video lecture on completing the worksheet. We're now focused here at the bottom on the total section, and we noticed that for the totals, let me highlight it for you, that the trial balance balances out section, the adjustments are unbalanced, the adjusted trial balance section balances, but the income statement and the balance sheet as of right now are not in balance. So the question left on the table from the last video lecture was what has to be done to complete the worksheet to get these last two sections to balance? Well, to do that, you must determine whether we have net income or a net loss for the accounting period and how much. Since we're talking about net income, we're going to focus on the income statement section of the worksheet. The debit side of the income statement shows total expenses for the accounting period, and the credit side shows total revenue. To determine whether we have net income or a net loss, we subtract expenses from our total revenue. So we can see from our illustration that the revenue exceeds the expenses. Therefore, we've earned net income for the difference and got your calculator to what the, what the amount is going to be. Okay, you got it? I'm going to put it down like about 42,009 something. I'll do it in a minute. But subtract the expenses from the revenue to determine what should be the amount of your total net income or net loss. Now, since we have net income for the calendar period and the totals and the account title column in the bottom after totals, you will write in the word net income. If it was a net loss, you will write in the word net loss. Okay? Now, to complete the worksheet, listen carefully, we're going to add the net income amount to the smaller column of the income statement onto the smaller column of the balance sheet. Again, once you determine the amount of your net income or your net loss, we're going to add the net income amount to the smaller column of the income statement and to the smaller column of the balance sheet. So we see that the debit column of the income statement is smaller than the credit column. Therefore, we're going to add the net income amount of $42,975 to the debit column of the income statement. By going to the balance sheet, we see that the credit side is the smaller side for the balance sheet. So we're now going to add that same Net income amount, $42,975 to the credit column of my balance sheet. So I now I want to get my totals again to make sure that, that these last two sections are in balance. So for the income statement, I'm going to add the two amounts on the debit side. And they total 58500 Bring down the amount from the credit side. Now my income statement, debit credit column or unbalanced. For the balance sheet, I'll bring down the 93225 On the credit side, I'm going to add the $50,250 plus the $42,975. And look at there. We are now in balance. Now the income statement section as well as the balance sheet section are all in balance. So the worksheet is not complete until all five sections are in balance. Okay? Now let me ask you a question. Once you have completed the five sections of the worksheet, what do we do with the do we use information for? I am glad you asked this question. Well, there's a few things. First, the information in the adjustments section 
we must record that into our general journal because these adjustments shown here as of right now, they're only shown on the worksheet. To become part of our permanent county information, this information we must record it to our general journal. So I'm going to click on my journal tab. We're in 2019, January 31st. And those adjustments we can put in whichever you want to put them in. So our first one was for supplies. So again, you're focused on the adjustment section of the worksheet. And we can just want for the we can do for depreciation. We're just going to write the first one I have for depreciation expense. Remember in a journal, whatever account you're going to debit is always written first in the journal, followed by the account, that's not the right number, to be shown on the credit side. So this information that we're recording right now, remember that it is coming from the adjustment section of the worksheet. So we debit the expense account, $925, credit to the contra asset account, accumulated appreciation, $925. So I'm gonna highlight them as we get those done. So that one's complete and that one's complete. For the next adjustment, it dealt with insurance expense and with prepaid insurance. So I'm going to desk debit insurance expense, the $1,025, and credit prepaid insurance for $1,025, OK? So again, the adjustments shown on the worksheet have to be journalized, all right? And then for the last adjustment, it dealt with supplies expense and dealt with our supplies account. So once again, the, the account on the debit side goes first, supplies expense for the 2850, that's the wrong box. It goes over here and credit our, get to the right one, and credit our supplies account for $2,850. So we're just taking this information from the adjustment section of the worksheet and record it into the general journal. This has to be done in order to make the adjustments become part of our permanent accounting information. The other purpose behind the worksheet, just doing some format here, is that we now have the information required in order to prepare our different types of financial statements. For example, based upon this worksheet, when you prepare your income statement, are you going to have a net income or a net loss and for how much? Well, you know already it's going to be net income because that's the amount that you have on the worksheet it's a matter of just taking the information from the income statement section of the worksheet and putting it on the actual income statement. From the worksheet, we can prepare our statement of owner's equity because this statement shows us our beginning capital balance, $40,975. We it shows us our net income, the $42,975. If we had it, it would show our drawing account, which we don't have for this problem. But my point is, the information needed to prepare the statement of owner's equity, you can get all the information from the actual worksheet. The same holds true for the balance sheet. You will focus on the balance sheet section of the worksheet, and you will take this information to prepare the actual balance sheet. Okay? So now you know how to complete the five sections of the worksheet and you should also know how to use this information in order to prepare your financial statements and to make the adjusting entries well your journal entries in your journal at the end of the accounting period okay so be sure to study the information coming out of chapter five on how to prepare the worksheet